Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> ambition has not served women well. They haven't been enough. Women need the support of society in, in order to succeed. For the past couple of centuries, women have been left behind. It will take a baby girl born today about 80 years to achieve full gender parity, 80 years to gain access to equal opportunities, receive equal treatment, have equal pay. It doesn't matter if she's a banker in Geneva or a factory worker in India. Right now, she's not treated as an equal. The 2030 goals can change that. Today, with the MDGs and all the learning from them behind us, with the SDGs being signed, that look at the whole world development rather than just focusing on the underdeveloped world, today is historic. A path for irreversible prosperity and gender equality is made. Future generations will hold us accountable for the promises made today and not delivered. We have a unique opportunity for change, for substantive equality to be implemented, for the gaps to be filled, for the challenges to be overcome. Most women around the world are paying the mommy tax, the mommy penalty. The price of having the ability to produce children means that your whole life's trajectory is mapped out for you. From access to schooling, choosing a college major, going to college, work opportunities, work advancement, even access to pension plans. The average woman, according to the world's total fertility rate, will have 2.3 children during a 10-year period of her life. And yet, most of the 73 years life expectancy and her life decisions and outcomes are based on those 10 years of caregiving. I believe that by looking at real, strategic, bold changes, in the following three areas, we can help women achieve the substantive equality and address some of the root causes. For example, in economic empowerment, understanding, creating, and implementing life cycle-based policies that do not limit a woman's accomplishment to her fertile years, but gives her access to prolonged access of resources and lifelong learning. For example, not limiting higher education or government scholarships by age, as is done in many countries, knowing that many women around the world might have a delayed entry point to high school, college, or work. Providing adequate, affordable child and elderly care for working women. Equal pay at all levels. Most importantly, recognizing and valuing unpaid care and domestic work of moms and the contribution it has for society through the nurturing of people who are fit and developed. And by giving voice to these women who do not have it, giving voice to them in policy making. A second area of improvement is in changing stereotypes. 70% of opinions formed come from visual media. We must create media that questions the deeply ingrained stereotypes of female roles in society and which promote equality and help people and cultures to change to a path acceptable to all members of society. A third point is leadership. Promoting female leadership and decision making by placing quotas on all sectors to help governments and the private sector to mentor, push, and promote women to an adequate number and level of leadership participation in all sectors. A lot of the issues and obstacles, how do you pay for these changes and these initiatives? I think we can redirect some of the defense spending. I think we can create value added tax that looks at these initiatives and helps create work environments that are fair and conducive to women's participation and governments can work with the private sector to implement the quotas in leadership positions, mentoring, and decision-making for both. It should not be the role of civil society, which I represent today, to hold governments and the private sector accountable. Governments should start to hold themselves accountable. The future of our very own prosperity depends on it. Thank you.